you're going to love this video because we get to do all that filtering stuff, stuff like sorting, filtering, query scopes, all that kind of thing. We're doing it through an API using Laravel Orion. I really love this stuff and I think you're going to enjoy it too. So let's open up a terminal and we'll say art db wipe just to bring us back to scratch here. And I'm going to add a couple of new fields to our post models fillable property. And that's going to be category. And how about we also have a published option for a post. So open up our terminal now, and then we can say art make migration in order to add those columns to the database. And we'll call this add published and category columns to post table. We can go ahead and open that up and throw them in here. How about table? And we'll do a Boolean for published, published. And maybe we'll give that a default value of false. So by default, a post is not going to be published. So let's create a new column that's going to be a string. And we'll call that category. And let's set a default to none there. We could set that to, none, to nullable, but I think I'll actually have a category of none that basically says there is no category here, just to be a little bit more descriptive. Open up our terminal, art migrate to run all of that through. Looks like it's working. And I'm pretty sure we just added that to post at the start of the video. Yeah, so they're mass assignable, which is good. Next, we wanna jump into the factory so that we can do that fake data really easily. So now I'll come in here and say published, and that's going to be equal to this faker and we want to basically generate a random Boolean. So I'm pretty sure there's one that just says Boolean, and there we go. And we'll also create another one for category, and how about we just have a word for that? So that's done. We'll quickly test it, art tinker, post factory, make sure I spell it right, factory, and then create one. And there we go. We've got publish set to false, so we've got a category there. Now I create a new one, there we go, now published is set to true, so that is actually random. So let's do another DB wipe there to bring us back to scratch. And now I wanna create a seeder just so adding all of this data in the future is going to be a little bit easier. And this is a good practice to get into. So let's open the seeder, database seeder. And instead of a user here, I'm going to create a post and we will create three posts and I wanna give it a category. So let's say the category is equal to Laravel Orion, and we're going to create a few of these. So let's paste that down a few times. Laravel tips, how about view tips? And what about coding architecture? That's something I'm particularly interested in right now. Coding architecture, maybe just one more. How about coding in the mind? And I can get rid of this one here. So now that we've got that cedar done, how about we just do another DB wipe? I think I already did that already, but just to be safe. We'll art migrate, so we're going to migrate the database, and now we can see art DB seed. And there we go, we got some data in there. Just to check, we can say post all, and there they are. And by the way, you can also, let me just wipe the database again, art DB wipe. You can also say art migrate and add the seed flag that's going to migrate your database and seed it as well. So if we go tinker now, post or, you'll notice that we have all of those posts in there. So that's kind of a cool tip. And now we've got one problem here, and that's if I go back to Postman, and let's just try and grab the user, it's not going to work. Oh, here we go. Just need to start up the server, art serve. So we come in here, notice that we're actually going to get an error. And if I come into posts, none of these are actually going to work. And that's because we've now lost our authorization token. Remember how in the first video we created a token and set that bearer token here? That is no longer set, and so we have to go ahead and create it again. So luckily, Laravel makes that super easy. I can just say tinker, user, and we'll create a user using a factory. And then we'll just say create token when that's done, and we'll call that token passport. And there it is here, we can copy that, come back to Passport, paste it in here, and let's see if this request works now. And it does. Now one more thing I wanna show you, um, and we're not actually gonna use this in this video, but it's a really cool tip. What you can do is set up environments in Postman. 
So at the moment, we're using this token for all of our requests. But I'm actually going to cut that, come to environments, and then create a new environment here, and we'll call it the admin environment. And we can set a variable here equal to access token, and then we can paste the token straight in there. But then we could have another one for the client. So this is an environment for the client. And then we could put the exact same thing in here, access token, but then call this my dash access dash token. So if you had something behind the scenes that checked whether a user was a client and checked whether a user was an admin, then you could have these two environments. This one will authenticate you as an admin. And then for this one, you create an API token for a client. Now, when we come to collections here and click on Orion, rather than having the token in there, we can now refer to that variable. So we'll say here personal, oh no, it wasn't personal, it was access token. I'm pretty sure that was it. Yeah, and now for the environment, we can choose admin. And now when we make requests, it's going to grab the user as an admin. But if we had the concept of a client, and in this video, I haven't actually done that, but you can imagine that you might be checking a field that says like role is equal to admin or role is equal to client. Then you would send that request and it would send back the client instead. Of course, it doesn't work in this example. But I thought that was just something really worth knowing because a lot of you are going to be making API requests and you'll want to test whether the user is a client or if the user is an admin. So for this series, we'll just set that to admin for now and we can go ahead and continue.